Here we go. Okay, so uh, welcome to the fourth session of the styles and method in the early modern and the modern period uh, seminar. Uh, my name is Matteo Vagelli. I am a Marie Curie postdoctoral fellow in philosophy of science uh, at the Department of Philosophy and Cultural Heritage at the University of Kaposkari, Venice. This seminar is part of the activities of Epistyle, uh, a project which has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 uh, Research and Innovation Program under the Marie Curie uh, Grant Agreement number 10103064. Please visit uh, univet.it slash epistyle, the website of the project for more information and for the complete program of the seminar. We have one more session to go at the end of uh, May. Uh, I will tell you more about this uh, later on. Uh, abstracts are also available uh, on the on the website. And uh, my apologies to Emily. I uh, Emily, I I, um, um, I only now realized that the, the abstract uh, for your talk was not the right one. So I asked to change it. They didn't change it in time. But the one that I circulated on the list was the right one. So I, at least I, I made up for that early mistake, uh, at least I hope. Uh, as said before, uh, this uh, meeting will be recorded by participating, you give your consent. Uh, if you do not wish your image to be recorded, please feel free to turn your camera off. Today, I am very happy uh, to have Emily Passignat, who I want to thank for having accepted my uh, invitation. Emily Passignat obtained a PhD in art history at the University of Pisa, and uh, she is currently a researcher at the Kafoskari University of Venice. Her research concerns artistic uh, historiography, theories of art, sculpture, and decorative cycles, with the background question of the reception and description of the work of art, as well as cultural exchanges in modern Europe, especially between Italy and France. Um, recently published essays deal also with the question of visual norm and with the construction and evolution of artistic vocabulary. Among her latest publications, you can find Il Cinquecento, Le Fonti per la Storia dell'Arte, published by Carocci, 2017. Forthcoming publications concern the construction of art history during the 20th century. Today, she will present a talk titled Manner, Connoisseurship and Taxonomy, Individual and Collective Identity. So the talk will be about, um, you can talk as much as you want, basically, but I, I imagine, I imagine <laughs> something between uh, maybe 50 40, minutes 40. and 60 minutes. Yeah, they are 45 okay. to 50 minutes. 50, yeah. 50. <laughs> yeah, 50, 50, 50 minutes. Um, and then we, we shall have time have so for... Much. Okay, okay, great. And then we shall have time for an open discussion. So um, please, Emily, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you. I have uh, some um, slides that I would like to share with you very few slides oh but i have the same problem can you give me the authorization to uh, share my my screen you because should be on you should yet. be on now okay You can see it's good. Um, well, in this way, I think it's good. Can you confirm? Yeah. Hmm. Yes, um, I can see. So I would like, first, first of all, uh, to thank Matteo for this invitation to share some research um, and ideas uh, about a very important concept, the style in uh, history of art, but not only. I'm so grateful also for this effort to build uh, some bridge between disciplines. And I just hope that I will be able to provide some uh, material for your project because this is my aim today and I have a, a lot of uh, material to, uh, to provide for you, um, hoping that it will be useful for you. 
If I'm here today, uh, it is because I had the possibility in the past to question myself um, on the use of the term manner in the artistic literature. Dealing with the term of the reception of mannerism uh, during uh, my first uh, academic researches. And what I'm going to discuss now derives from the, my research within the framework of the European project Lexart, Word for Hearts, Words for Heart, uh, directed by directed by Michel Caroline Eck, and it was a project uh, hosted by the Montpellier University in France uh, some years ago. Um, it's now closed. This project, an IRC project, advanced IRC project. In a few words, to start with our topics today, manner, a pragmatic, a paradigmatic term in the, artistic, in the artistic lexicon, combines at the same time a, theoric, a theoretical, practical and critical dimension. A difficult association that has determined its uh, semantic evolution, marked by a numerous, uh, numerous fluctuations and by a progressive negative polarization. So much that this term, manner, has been substituted by style. And my, my idea today is to propose a synthetic uh, uh, synthesis of uh, the history of this term in order to highlight uh, the relationship with the term style in the light of the, uh, all the theoretical um, implications. And the first tape uh, is the one uh, that begins with Vasari. It is almost impossible to approach the notion of maniera without first considering the writing of Giorgio Vasari. Uh, since it is the most important author, uh, we imposed and endorsed its use in the artistic vocabulary, um, attributing, it, uh, um, attributing it to it the, the meaning of recognizable character of an individual or a collective artistic entity. Also, this uh, subject, um, this kind of research, has uh, already been uh, extensively dealt with. I mean, uh, the complex history and evolution of this term, it remains to make some useful observation about the adoption of maniera, some aspects of which has, has been so far too neglected. The main question is why Vasari chose this term rather than style? It turns out that several influential men of letters did not hesitate to, the, to use the style when referring to artists, precisely in the period before the first edition of the Vasarian Lives. This is the case, for example, of Giulio Camillo e Laretino. The first one, Giulio Camillo, expert in logic, uh, you surely know him, um, proposes uh, to the artist a uh, classification in seven steps of the necessary knowledge to reach the perfection of their in their discipline. Ex and he explains in, this in his treatise on the imitation, uh, I quote, nel sesto, nel sesto grado, devono essere ordinate tutte le posizioni o movimenti del corpo che dir vogliamo. Questo sarebbe per avventura quello nel quale l'artefice potrebbe mostrare più che in altro lo stile suo. Similarly, l'aretino, who was Vasari's mentor, speaks of style for artists on several occasions in his correspondence, not in the lies, but in the correspondence. And for example, the letter prizing Michelangelo's works sent to, um, to Vasari, and uh, we, can, uh, we can read in this letter, in conclusione, lo stile del grande uomo è lo spirito dell'arte, perciò le figure da lui scolpite e dipinte parlano, muovono, espirano. Behind these two occurrences of the term style, significant in many respects, lies above all the great topic of ut pictura poiesis. And from his point of view, Vasari must certainly have uh, had no objection of, um, to borrowing a word from the lexicon of the letter, since, like most of the art theorists of this time, he strove to elevate the status of the painter to that of the poet. It is very revealing that um, 
that he chose uh, on the wall to represent on the wall of the, his Florentine home the allegory of painting and uh, poetry um, in almost identical postures, as you can see in this slide. On the other hand, uh, you can see now the allegory of sculpture. It was much less indigent with sculpture, um, um, painting, representing an, an allegory that borders on caricature of the art of sculpture. In fact, for this allegory of sculpture, uh, he represented, um, the figure of uh, sculpture is represented while making a kind of river god uh, in marble, and he took up the compositional solution that was then in vogue. Uh, the theme of uh, uh, wrestlers, um, which features two figures in a dominant, dominated uh, um, relationship, thus wishing um, to illustrate a situation of perpetual conflict between the sculpture and the material. And this is Vasari's personal and very private uh, response to the Paragon debate. In the case of the, I return to the uh, paragon with um, the poetry. In the case of the painter and the poet, the relationships between the creator and his work uh, remain serene, comfortable position, we can note, and uh, the working tools, above all, the, the pen and the brush, could undoubtedly have uh, contributed to... Um, the, these uh, working tools are almost merged, they are, they are most similar, quite identical. This last detail is uh, particularly telling. This choice, uh, the choice of the term um, style could, uh, could have undoubtedly contributed to emphasize this parallel by relying precisely on the similarity on, uh, of the instruments used by the painter and the poet. The stylus was used for writing in ancient times, and the stile was still a part of the draftsman uh, equipment. Vasari mentions it, for example, in his answer to Benedetto Varchi, when he evokes the difficulty of rendering shadows and the light of the painter. This is the quotation. E finito questo, pigliate una carta e disegnatevi su il medesimo, e quando d'intornato avete le prime linee, voi con lo stile, o penna, o matita, o pennello, cominciate ad ombrarla. The theorist of the 16th century wanted to emphasize the evidence of a common origin to the art and the letters, recalling, moreover, that the Greek term graphene allowed to designate without distinction the art, the art of writing, drawing, and painting. However, at the time of Vasari, when, um, at the time in which Vasari was writing the lives, the author's aims were, if possible, more ambitious. And style, at this point, was a technical term without any particular relief, referring not only to a tool for drawing, but also to a log of wood. Um, if the, ancient, the ancient link with the letter was not known by the artist, by most of the artists of this time. It therefore did not, not fit well to supporting uh, the theoretical dimension envisioned by Vasari. It was essential to make um, oneself understood by one's colleagues, uh, which implied recovering uh, the common lexicon from the botteghe, where maniera was already, uh, was already used, and uh, in a meaning that Vasari, at this point, would have just uh, had to, to refine. Through its etymology, maniera also allowed for the hand to be emphasized. The hand as an extension of the mind, the hand that freely translates the artist's idea, the excellence of the drawing did not depend on the tool, but on the manual uh, skill. One of the challenges of the theorists was to succeed in giving a new intellectual layer to art without reducing or losing the value of um, action, of the gesture necessary for the accomplishment of the work. Without the, continu the continuous training of the hand, the artist was considered unable to translate its, its, uh, his inventions. 
It is in the same vein that Baccio Bandinelli advised against the use of instruments to guide the line by claiming in his uh, Libro del Disegno, we may, uh, in published, that one can only achieve perfection by practicing drawing with a free hand, senza sesta e riga. That is, by the way, a rather explicit uh, criticism of, uh, criticism of uh, Dürer's uh, geometric treatise uh, entitled Unterweisung der Messung im der Zicke, Dirkel und Richtscheid, senza sesta e riga, responded Vandinelli. The artist concept of style indicated uh, by, um, indicated, uh, by uh, metonymy Highlighting an instrument was therefore not able to convey the new theoretical ambition, uh, the ambitions of the milieu, uh, the Florentine milieu. On the other hand, without focusing on a particular tool, on a specific tool, and also because the panoply of the tools used by the artist was very abundant, Maniera was better adapted to the wall of the artistic disciplines. And it was this, an advantage, a great advantage, far from being negligible, with the, which constituted a, late, a later unifying element of the arts at the dawn of the foundation of the Accademia del Disegno, that was to be founded by Vasari at this time, and Montorsoli. The other drawback of style, of the term style, was its rather limited meaning when men of letters used this word at this time. It was most often with an essentially, uh, essentially positive uh, polarity. This can be noticed, for example, in the quotation for Laretino about Michelangelo uh, mentioned before. Maniera lent himself to a broader use, corresponding to the imprint, the mark of the artist in the work, which could be good or bad. It is therefore not surprising to see Vasari multiplying adjectives to qualify and describe the manner of each artist. Let's remember that uh, with Vasari, we are witnessing the burst of our criticism um, and that through the lives, very conscientious choices uh, are made in terms in term of the in term of lexicon. With the aim of forging the artistic vocabulary and while aiming, by the way, to impose Tuscan uh, as a language, as the language of the arts. In this context, Maniera immediately assumed a, deci a decisive a role and uh, became a K-term, a crucial junction, between, uh, um, a junction point between practical, theoretical, and critical vocabulary. Last observation on Bazzari, to justify Himself for having undertaken the writing of the lives, Vasari presents, uh, presents himself as an expert who riconosce, I uh, quote a part of this quotation that you can see on the slide, riconosce le varie maniere degli artefici come un pratico cancelliere e uh, i diversi e variati scritti dei suoi equali. And at the same time, in a fundamental passage of his, uh, the, his third premio, he also explains that he wants, he wants, and I quote it uh, uh, in a translation, to make known to those who do not know to do this for themselves, the causes and the roots of the manners and the improvement and decline of the arts, which occurred at different times and in different persons. These two important quotations testify to the emergence of the figure of the connoisseur and the amateur, and reveal to what an extent the various declensions of Maniera had to respond to the demands of a blooming art market according to a solution that would have a last impact, a lasting impact. Following this thread, the use of Maniera associated to numerous adjectives without pejorative connotation a priori continues uh, in the successive artistic literature, in particular in Carlo Cesare Malvasia, André Felibien, who also count on the epithet, on these adjectives, to modulate all the nuances of maniera, giving it in turn the sense of praise or blame. I will be brief to explain the main consequences of this concept of plurality of the maniere. 
this diversity of manners uh, was one of the most common preoccupations for theorists in the 17th century. For example, for Abraham Boss, there should only be one manner, one single manner, just one which would be that um, of what is natural, because there is only one model uh, uh, to, uh, to imitate. Une seule qui soit celle du naturel, um, I quote Abraham Boss. And some authors tempted to find an explanation to the, ori to the origin of uh, the plurality. It was by approaching this question from a, a more aesthetic, more global perspective that the idea of climatological determinism came into play. Henri Testelin, for example, and Girard Audran saw the diversity of manners as a, as a consequence of the impossibility of agreeing, um, find um, a common uh, agreement on the definition of beauty, which varied, as they say, they wrote it, uh, the beauty uh, which varied considerably, considerably from uh, one country to another. This aspect of the discourse um, led to a sort of cartography of manners and played a considerable role uh, in the evolution of the notion of school of painting. Interesting pointing out the position of Roger de Pille in this uh, uh, context, uh, because this author, uh, Roger de Pille, added a further complication uh, to the dilemma of the diversity, insisting on the variability of the manner in the course of the artist life's time, establishing in this way the theory of the three manners. Clearly exposed in his uh, Idée du peintre parfait. And it was an adaptation, uh, the three manners of the painter, to the three way uh, diagrams of the ages of the men, uh, derived from uh, uh, the Aristotelian uh, conception that we can find also in uh, the art, art poétique by Boileau. According to this concept, uh, ethos considered the second manner um, as the, the manner of the maturity of the artist. The third one uh, was instead the decline of quality in the career of an artist. From diversity flowed a whole range of adjectives uh, associated with manner in the wake of the model imposed by Vasari, using uh, using descriptions, but also aiming to distinguish the good from the bad, and uh, capable of wearing between praise and reprimand, as I said. And beyond their essential descriptive and analytical value, these adjectives add uh, a first-line function in the creation of category for classifying the works of master, uh, the work and the master of the past. That's why I introduced the notion of uh, taxonomy in my title, because Maniera allowed a progressive classification of the artistic production in the same way Buffon was uh, classifying the variety of uh, living being. And this is the first consequence of the, plural the plurality, the necessity or the, um, of if we take a, uh, another point of view, the possibility to classify the work of art. The second consequence directly depends on the first one. To carry out the classification, experts are needed. Um, and this is how connoisseurship develops with the emergence of the figure of the connoisseur. Who, um, the connoisseur as a figure is able to distinguish um, and recognize the manners, the different manners as already claimed by Vasari in the quotation I made before. I don't think I, it would be useful here to explain in um, how this science, uh, the connoisseurship science, uh, grows up from the middle of the 17th century. This is a phenomenon we can follow by reading a certain number of, uh, a certain number of treaties. But for now, it is maybe more interesting to discuss why we don't use any more maniera instead of still today in history of art. Through um, 200 years, the situation has, uh, from Vasari um, and going, uh, the situation has changed 
significantly in the definition of maniera. And alongside, alongside maniera, for example, in the dictionary of Jacques Lacombe and Antoine Joseph Pernetti, appears another term, maniere, which in the meantime has made its entry into the artistic vocabulary. Intended for a wider audience, Antoine Joseph Pernetti published his uh, Dictionnaire Portatif um, in uh, 1757. And he defines manner on four pages. It is an important entry of uh, his dictionary. I quote very briefly in English, so there's no need to, uh, to put it on uh, the slides. The manner of a painter is properly his style. It is his doing, he writes. Underlining the synonyms, uh, style and le faire, style, le style, le faire, that were being, beginning to circulate more commonly in the academic world. But above all, the author notes uh, further on uh, that one should not confuse the expression to have a manner and to be mannered, suggesting therefore that it is uh, henceforth the derivative mannered which carries a pejorative connotation. It is important to, to observe maniere, mannered, as a new autonomous uh, entry in this dictionary by uh, Antoine Joseph Pernetti, where the criticism and the repetition and the distance uh, of the nature emerges. The same, um, this was a interior, okay. The same happens with the Jacques Lacombe, who also insists in, uh, on this uh, distinction in his, in his uh, Dictionnaire Portatif des Beaux-Arts, published a few years later, um, earlier. His definition of manier is moreover very interesting uh, for the enigmatic aspect in induced by the je ne sais quoi, probably borrowed by, from Frère de Chambray or Baldinucci. And uh, um, it is a way of doing, this is a, um, not in this quotation, but a few lines uh, above. It is a way of doing a touch, a taste, a choice, finally, a je ne sais quoi, which characterizes and makes known the work of a painter and sometimes even of a whole school. After what um, he recommends, il faut prendre garde, and you have it on the slides, il faut prendre garde de confondre ces deux façons de parler, avoir une manière, et être maniéré, qui sont deux choses bien différentes. La manière d'un peintre est, comme on l'a dit, le faire et en quelque sorte son style. Mais être maniéré, c'est sortir de la nature et du vrai, et ne tenir à rien que d'une pratique vicieuse. These definitions summarize the essence of almost a century of debate on the question of imitation. We have to um, Filippo Baldinucci, the appearance in writing of the new adjective ammanierato in the entry maniera of uh, his uh, dictionary. Maniere, manerd, was uh, um, sufficiently used in France at the end of the 17th century for Antoine Furtier to be included in his, uh, uh, in his uh, Dictionnaire Universel, that would have been the Dictionnaire de l'Académie la, Française in a, a certain sense. And I quote uh, Antoine Furtier, qui se dit, uh, manière, qui se dit d'un peintre qui n'étudie ni l'antique ni la nature, mais que ni, qui ne suit que son génie. On appelle le travail de Joseph Pain un travail manieré. Also, this presence in the dictionaries, it must be noted that maniere was not yet widespread uh, in writing during the 17th century. We note in particular an occurrence in the Discours sur la couleur by Henri Testelin, where mannered uh, is also opposed to the model of nature. It was during the first half of the 18th century that the use of manner became respread in the publication in parallel of the loose um, in parallel with the loose the, the loss of a value of manner the interest of a derivative of uh, this kind was to allow the removal of a good part of the negative connotations that have uh, 
that had gradually been associated with the word manner in order to maintain its use, the use of manner. And now I will comment on the, the loss of the value of uh, the term manner, maniera, maniere. It is well known that a decisive step in the history of, term, of the term manner was taken with the uh, unappellable condemnation issued from the pen uh, of um, Giovanni Pietro Bellori uh, in 1672. But the extent of the debates uh, that were punctually verified in France, illustrated by several academic conferences on the theme of manner, actually took a more complex and multifaceted, um, multifaceted uh, direction in a constantly evolving theoretical context uh, simulated by contrasting position uh, in the academic world. The first of this, the first of this conference, entitled Contre les copistes de manière, against the copist of manners, was pronounced by Philippe de Champagne in the same year of, uh, the, as the publication of the Levite de Pittori di Bellori. The author, uh, Philippe de Champagne, invites to change the pedagogical practices of the Royal Academy. He distinguishes the imitation of the master which is an obligatory passage for the student from the systematic copying of uh, copying of copying of the manner of one and the same always the same uh, master the manner in itself is not condemned here in this case he recommends uh, on the contrary to the young painters to prendre to, I have the translation, it's um, uh, to take what it is of uh, um, the more beautiful in all the particular manner and to form with the imitation of the bees a juice, namely a beauty which, has, uh, which was clean um, to them. I find this image so important for the, its connection with the, um, the ideal conception of the beauty and the, the image of the bees that uh, we have with uh, Philippe de Champagne. At this point, the conference uh, of the Count of uh, Kelus, Le Comte de Kelus, entitled, I translated translate the, the title, On the Manner and uh, the Means of Avoiding It, pronounced on September uh, 2, uh, 1747 is very enlightening, a very interesting conference, academical conference. It is a part of um, completely, um, a completely different context, that of a turn, uh, um, the context of a turn to the classical modern actively promoted by Kellus, um, who was uh, passionate about archaeology. His opinion is resolutely critical. La manière, quelques définitions qu'on en donne et de quelque côté qu'on puisse la regarder n'est qu'un défaut plus ou moins heureux. Ne nous y trompons pas, c'est l'habitude de voir toujours de la même façon. Ou pour dire plus, c'est une malheureuse approbation que nous donnons souvent à notre paresse. The manner is thus above all a defect. In the heart of the century of the Enlightenment, where... Um, where the quest for truth is the supreme goal, the personality of the painter takes a second place. He goes on, the Contoculus. I don't take it on the, the slide, sorry. Sûrement, ce n'est pas une faculté méritante, car enfin, avouons-le, avons, avons une chose que nous mettons à la place de la nature, ne peut être approuvé dans un art qui ne consiste que dans sa parfaite imitation. Surely, I uh, give the translation, it's, made, it's uh, maybe better. Surely it is not a meritorious faculty, for at least uh, let us confess it, confess it. A thing that we put in the place of nature cannot be approved in an art which consists only on its perfect imitation. The manner of the painter is now considered as an obstacle uh, to the contemplation of the nature, 
Beyond the usual denunciation of the repetition, the author detects in some way a psychological origin of this fault, which he defines as being a, a, a habit of seeing. Um, let us also note uh, how much the, he distances himself from the idea, the ideal beauty based on the theory of the election. Uh, the same I see in the Philippe de Champagne image of the bees, exemplified by the famous uh, the concept of ideal uh, beauty, is exemplified by um, the famous Plinian anecdote of uh, Xerxes and the girl of Croton. This research of the beauty, which implies the correction of the model by, uh, provided by nature, seems to him a source of errors, of mistakes, uh, great mistakes. This is another part of the quotation by the Count of Calus of the same conference. Je crois le défaut de la manière fondé sur le malheur de la nature. Un modèle n'est jamais parfait. Vous comprenez que pour de telles opérations, cette nécessité de suppléer, malheureusement inévitable, a donc produit et produira encore d'heureux hasards. Car je ne puis le nommer autrement. This last observation is significant because it puts uh, in relation the manner with the misfortune of nature. From his point of view, the great problem is to be found at the level of the joints between the selected parts, areas where the artist's creativity, even his fantasy, uh, must necessarily interfere. He therefore questions this approach, which passes through selection and the practice of assembling and judges, um, judges it practically apparatic. 200 years later, um, a certain dilemma was already perceived in the word of Paolo Pino and um, Francisco de Olanda. On the one hand, on the, one hand the latter uh, theorized the, the concept of idea, exalting the, uh, the role of imagination. While on the other hand, he warned the artist not to distance himself from the model of nature, reminding him that his first master is undoubtedly the divine, that divine creation. This moral aspect of the sacrality of nature led the theorists of the counter-reformation um, peri counter -reformation period to condemn the artistic freedom, which had gradually been established by making the artist a true demiurge, if we want to define, uh, to define the artist like that, a true demiurge. The church thus began to repress the use of imagination. In this context, considering nature imperfect and wanting to correct it or even reinterpreting it became a vain action. This is why the manner, that imprint of the artist in the work which reveals himself, it, uh, which, re which reveals itself as a more um, or less distorting filter of reality was under accusation. It was seen as a sign of the artist's vanity and thus became a vice for Bellori. For the most purist um, terrorist, whether for moral or ethical uh, reasons, the manner was henceforth regarded as unacceptable. It is not by chance that in, um, in the same period in which Bellori's volume was published, not only did the adjective maniere appear, but also another derivative, manieriste, perhaps more audacious. The formation of this neologism actually anticipates uh, Bellori's attack by several years. It is due to Roland Fréard de Chambray in his treatise L'idée de la perfection de la peinture, published in 1662. I don't have enough time to uh, explain the details of the context of the birth of this term in this treatise. Like Manieri, sorry for the bells, <laughs> like Manieri, the use of Manierist was initially quite sporadic 
Abraham Boss used it a few years later uh, in the Peintre Converti, another treatise, Le Peintre Converti by Abraham Boss, and uh, Roger de Pille used it in his commentary for uh, the L'Art de Peinture by Alphonse Dufresnois, um, important poem uh, composition, poetic composition. In line with uh, Frère de Chambray, Boss, uh, um, Boss's mannerist practice is a practice, a practice based on the abusive imitation of the master, which leads to, uh, which leads which leads uh, the young artist uh, to move away from the model of beautiful nature. While De Peel, um, with De Peel, the word appears about the difficulty of the expression of the patients, prizing the, the principle of variety. I, I quote him. It is this diversity of species, of patients, which makes the distinction between the painter who are really skillful with those which, which one calls mannerist and who repeats until five or six times the same painting, in the same painting, the same physiognomies. We find here the problem of the repetition, very recurrent in the condemnation of the manner. And um, it was, uh, derivative from the, the definition of the bella maniera by, by Vasari. In the dictionaries, mannerist is rarely mentioned. Antoine Joseph Pernetti includes, uh, uh, includes this term mannerist under the, uh, in the entry maniere. When the term of the self repetition emerges again, Un peintre maniéré est celui qui se répète dans tous ses ouvrages. Quelques-uns donnent à ces mauvais artistes le nom de maniériste. Mais ce terme n'est pas du bon usage. I quote in an English version. A managed painter is one who repeats himself in all his work, in all his works. Uh, some give this bad artist the name of maniériste, but this term is not of good use. Obviously, Friar de Chambly's um, neologism has, had been rejected, at least in writing. Even Antoine Furtier, who formulated his definition uh, quoted about, uh, above on the basis of uh, Friar's observation, preferred not to retain um, mannerist, but only manieré. Mannerist was therefore little used during the century following its creation. It was reaffirmed, um, retaining uh, its uh, negative connotation after the invention of uh, mannerism, perhaps because the suffix ism is, uh, was necessary for the word ist to survive. That is a question of mine. Anyway, compared to manner, whose meanings have often remained fluctuating and sometimes unclear, the derivatives that appear in the second half of the 17th century belong exclusively to the lexicon of criticism used to blame a work or, uh, or an artist whose interpretation of the model of nature is used uh, to be bad, whether uh, through laziness or lack of humility. According to Mich uh, Michel François d'André Bardon, another uh, art theorist, après la honte d'être ignorant, rien n'est plus injurieux à l'artiste que le titre de maniéré. After the shame of being ignorant, nothing is more insulting for the artist than the title of manerd. It would seem that uh, for some people, maniéré est and manierist uh, were both insults, the second being the most vehement one. I am to conclude uh, this, uh, this presentation, this paper, with the birth of the term uh, mannerism. Its uh, true birth uh, certificate can be established uh, uh, in the 1792 when Luigi Lanzi published the first edition of the Storia Pittorica dell'Italia, which actually mark 
uh, marks only the beginning of the account of his uh, research. Lanzi used um, both deri derivatives um, on of manner discussed in this section, manieré, manieriste. In the single volume of the first edition, the word uh, mannerist, uh, mannerism, is used in connection with the Florentine school uh, when commenting on the Vasari's manner. The latter is uh, considered as one of the as the responsible of the uh, for the decadence of the Florence school. He wanted to do so much, too much, according to Lanzi, and uh, his uh, speed um, while um, painting and is pulling off pulling out, uh, pulling off practice, uh, tirare dalla pratica, namely repeat uh, some figure from a composition to another, are condemned. Il metodo, il metodo, and that is the, the quotation from uh, Luigi Lanzi, um, an important quotation for the apparition, for the invention of the mannerism term. Il metodo quanto è vantaggioso per l'artista che così moltiplica i suoi guadagni, altrettanto è nocivo per l'arte, che per tale via urta necessariamente nel manierismo, ossia alterazione del vero. Mannerist and mannerism are used by Luigi Lanzi only to designate a period of decadence in the construction of, this, of his art history. Again, we have here a tentative of classification, but now in the time, so to obtain a periodization of his history. And the great paradox of all this long evolutionary process of the concept of manier is that Vasari, the first one to have conceived an history of the heart and a periodization uh, in which the la bella maniera represents the perfection, all the mutations undergone around um, this notion carries the, bera, the bella maniera to be only decadence. Obviously, the term style has remained almost untouched, untouched by all this implication and has therefore prevailed in its use. And I can, um, I can stop here this, uh, this explanation and interrupt my uh, presentation here. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. That